Hello, and welcome to a very special evening for the College of the Holy Cross and for seven of our truly remarkable graduates. 2020 and 2021 have been extraordinary and unprecedented years due to the numerous unforeseen challenges they have presented to all of us. Challenges that required us to adapt and to do the ordinary in extraordinary ways. In our response to the pandemic, we have excelled. Amidst very difficult and tragic times, good things have happened. And they have happened precisely because good people have worked with courage and resilience and tenacity to be women and men for and with others. Tonight, we gather to single out seven special graduates by awarding them the Sancte Crucis Award, the highest non-degree honor the College of the Holy Cross bestows. In this, the 23rd year of the award, we have chosen alums who have emerged as heroes in our fight to stem the tide of the crisis brought by the pandemic. These individuals were chosen because they have made distinctive contributions to our world in diverse ways of using their professional background to live the Ignatian Majus. By that, I mean the way that these generous women and men have responded to the needs of our world in commitments which touch more lives, which support and care for those with greater need, and which reveal God's healing and reconciling love more effectively. The contributions tonight's honorees have made are transformative, generous, and creative. And their careers have always kept the larger needs of our world in mind, whether through direct service or by supporting institutions and initiatives which have made a disproportionate difference. Dr. Helen Boucher has excelled as an expert in the treatment and prevention of infectious diseases. Dr. John Brown and Dr. Chris Crean have worked tirelessly to efficiently and humanely run emergency medicine services. Nurses Teresa Crean and Christine Krish have worked courageously on the frontline care of COVID patients. Ron Lawson has been relentless in his fight to help the homeless in New York City. And Erin McAleer has been tenacious in her battle to feed the hungry. Let me emphasize that it's important that we have gathered tonight because by giving special recognition to a few, we honor and recognize all our graduates who during this crisis have demonstrated they are women and men for and with others. And so now I'm going to ask Margaret Frigi, Provost and Dean of the College, to help me present the awards in the reading of the citations. Thank you, Father Burroughs. Before I present our first recipient, please note that we've left the chat open for you tonight, and you're welcome to use it as a way to share congratulations for all of our recipients after the reading of each citation. Dr. Helen Boucher, class of 1986, please turn on your camera and join me on stage. Dr. Helen Boucher, you have dedicated your life to combating illness, to expanding scientific knowledge, and to alleviating the suffering of others. You have wielded your intelligence, your curiosity, and your tenacity to make the world a better and safer place. You are a true living example of a crusader, working tirelessly for and with those in need. An internationally renowned expert, your mission has been to protect humanity from the global threat of microbial resistance. You serve as chief of the Division of Geographic Medicine and Infectious Diseases, as well as director of the Center for Integrated Management of Antimicrobial Resistance at Tufts University and Tufts Medical Center. Focusing your research on understanding and combating dangerous staph infections and developing new anti-infective agents, your work has been published in many of the most influential medical and academic journals. After joining Tufts Medical Center in 2002 as an infectious disease physician, you soon assumed the role of director of the Infectious Diseases Fellowship Program later adding the title of Director of the Heart Transplant and Ventricular Assist Device Infectious Diseases Program. 
a participant in the development and registration of new drugs such as voriconazole and daptomycin, you have advised companies on antimicrobial drug development, advocated for increased research, and taught in the annual Tufts Center for Drug Development course. A voting member of the Presidential Advisory Council on Combating Antibiotic Resistant Bacteria, you are elected treasurer of the Infectious Diseases Society of America. And somehow you still find the time to serve on the Board of Trustees for both the physicians of Tufts Medical Center and alma mater, Holy Cross. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, you have given of yourself more than ever before. Here at Holy Cross, we have been the beneficiaries of your research and outreach. You have been a primary advisor to the college's pandemic core team, advising Father Burroughs and the entire campus and alumni communities. Your multiple media appearances have brought an informed voice of reason to a panicked nation. As part of the Mask Up America campaign, you developed a toolkit of public service announcements, social content, and press guidance to promote safe protocols across the country. Repeatedly named one of the best doctors in America, you are a treasure of the Holy Cross community. With your husband and fellow alumnus, Norman Boucher, 85, you've made a rewarding life in Wellesley, Mass, raising your daughters, Caroline and Allie. For your dedication to public health, your commitment to research and healing, and your indefatigable guidance and leadership in a time of global crisis, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations, Helen. Thank you so much, Father Burroughs and Provost Frigi and members of the committee. I'm honored and humbled to be recognized with this award and with this incredible group of fellow alum. These past 16 months have been incredible and truly unprecedented. Even those of us in the pandemic response business could never have imagined the magnitude of this crisis and the myriad ways which we would be called. I've never been more grateful for my Holy Cross education especially for the lessons about the ability to communicate clearly, to make decisions in the face of limited data and to live with uncertainty. So many gifts of my Jesuit and Catholic education have helped me to get through with my team to save as many lives as possible during this time. I'm so grateful to my amazing family and friends and you called out my husband, Norm, 85, my daughters, Caroline and Allie, who have been just unwavering and supporting through this time. Finally, I want to thank my dad, Holy Cross class of 60, who is sadly not here with us in person, but I know is in spirit. So again, thank you so very much. Thank you, Helen, and congratulations. Dr. John Brown, class of 1978, please turn on your camera and join me on stage. Dr. John Brown, man of compassion, man of service, man of science. You've labored all your life for the benefit of others, dispensing care and dignity to those suffering through their worst moments. As the medical director of the San Francisco Medical Services Agency, you are responsible for the regulation of pre-hospital dispatch, first response, ambulance transport, and emergency medical care for the city and county of San Francisco. In this capacity, you organize and oversee a large network of first responders and emergency medical professionals. Studying, teaching, and writing about optimal practices in moments of crisis, you are a model of grace under pressure. In recognition of your distinguished service, you have been awarded the Charlotte Bear Memorial Award. For your dedication to underserved patients and those affected by global disasters, you received the California ACEP Humanitarian Award. In 2016, you were given the Special Recognition Award from the UCSF Association for your leadership in emergency medicine education. You are also a recipient of the Haley DeBoss Academy of Medical Educators Excellence in Teaching Award. In addition to all these honorifics, you have been called by a colleague, quote, one of the nicest guys you will ever meet, end quote. An associate clinical professor of 
emergency medicine at the University of California, San Francisco Medical School, and an attending physician at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center. You are also the EMS and Disaster Medicine Associate Fellowship Director for UCSF and a medical officer for the Disaster Medical Team CA6, the Bay Area's volunteer medical team for the National Disaster Medical System. A 14-year veteran of the US Navy Medical Corps, you also served as the Naval Surgeon General's Advisor for Emergency Medical Services and completed an EMS fellowship at the University of Arizona. Ever curious and a lifelong learner, you have delved into research regarding the use of EMS services, special events, EMS medicine, LGBT health issues, education for residents, and the development of EMS services in global health. In the midst of administrative duties, teaching and research, you made time to travel to Haiti on 11 different occasions to work and teach in village clinics, ministering to the poorest of the poor. A true leader you have instructed by example, focusing, as you said in an interview, quote, on strong basics of care and constancy of attention to the mission at hand, instead of politics du jour. Whether directing the small emergency department at the US Naval Hospital in Subic Bay, Republic of the Philippines, or coordinating disaster training in Odessa in the Ukraine, your colleagues attest to your ability to keep level-headed in the midst of chaos. For your humility, your empathy, your professionalism, and your determination and resilience during this year of pandemic, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Dignity, honesty, service, authenticity, sincerity, accountability, compassion. I struggled with these building blocks of a fulfilling adult life while at the College of the Holy Cross. My varied experiences in my undergraduate years formed me as a future physician, educator, public health leader, mentor, and friend. During the many dark hours of the past pandemic year, I called on these values that were shaped and challenged by my years at the cross. The dignity and authenticity I feel as an LGBT child of God and the need to recognize the unique value of all my sisters and brothers. The honesty and accountability to recognize, own, and correct my unskillful and hurtful behavior. The sincerity to welcome all where they are the hard work of living in compassion for myself and for others as the fullest experience of being with the problems of the world. I am so proud of my beloved EMS colleagues, dispatchers, first responders, EMTs, paramedics, public health professionals, disaster service workers. They turned the tide, lit the way, brought an end to isolation and fear for so many. Our readiness is improved for the next challenges we face to remove the barriers to health and the injustices that permeated our before times. I am tired and willing to take up the cross again tomorrow to help us get to that better place of justice and peace that I know from my student days are our duty, our right, and our promised joy. I am honored to to be in such devoted and selfless company. Thank you for this award. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Dr. Christopher Crean, class of 1997, please join me on camera. Dr. Christopher Crean. Your calling is to be the voice of calmness, knowledge, and leadership in the face of crisis. As a board-certified emergency physician, you assess, comfort, and heal individuals in their most difficult moments of fear, pain, confusion, and trauma. Day and night, you make life and death decisions that would stagger the average person. You left Mount St. James to study medicine at Georgetown University. 
You gravitated to emergency treatment, completing your residency in emergency medicine at the Carolinas Medical Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, where you were presented with the Outstanding Residence Research Achievement Award. You went on to join the faculty at the University of Massachusetts Medical School as an assistant professor of emergency medicine. In 2011, you, your wife, and tonight's co-honoree, Teresa, and your children, Lillian and Joshua, moved to New Jersey, where you joined the Envision Physician Services. Today, you serve as Associate Director and Vice Chairman for the Emergency Department at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Somerset Campus. Through this year of pandemic, you have given of yourself to a fearful, anxious, and bewildered public. You have embodied Kipling's ideal man, keeping your head while so many around you were losing theirs. An emergency physician must possess a complex assemblage of traits, and you are a model of leadership in moments of crisis when time is of the essence. You are an empathic listener and an informed decision maker. You are a well-trained expert and a man of action. You are rational and brave, sympathetic and dexterous, cool-headed and kind-hearted. One of your specialties in medical interests is wound care. And this fact underlines the selfless life you have built and both the skill and compassion you employ in your work. In a world that has been deeply wounded for over a year now, you have served on the front lines, putting your own health and safety at risk to tend to the immediate needs of others. Despite the pressures of your work and the time required by it, you have joined with your beloved Teresa to serve as an executive board member of your district's special education parent advisory group to provide aid to parents of special needs children. You appear never to tire of giving the best of yourself to those in the midst of their worst moments. For your courageous and important service during a time of great need, for your calling to heal the sick, bind their wounds, and bring comfort and assurance, for your example as a man of hope and healing in moments of crisis, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Father Bros, Provost Frigi, and to everyone at Holy Cross involved in this award. And I want to say congratulations to all the other recipients. Uh, I have to say, Teresa and I are just deeply honored and humbled by all of this. I just want to use a little of my time here just to express my gratitude for the many ways Holy Cross prepared me for a career in medicine, not the least of which was nurturing an understanding of what it means to be men and women with others. <laughs> Recently, I have been uh, reflecting on my freshman year classes with Professor McBride where we explored the history of medicine and where incidentally all the way back in the fall of 1993, I first learned about Dr. Anthony Fauci and his role in the early fight against the AIDS epidemic. It's kind of crazy now seeing so much of him this past year and thinking back to that class and the time Teresa and I went on one of our first dates to see him speak in person on campus. I just look back now and know without a doubt that my experiences at Holy Cross were critical in uh, the development of me into the physician I am today. So as I said before, Teresa and I are deeply honored by this recognition and for the implied acknowledgement of just how difficult a year it has been for our family. While Teresa and I cared for so many of the unfortunate Americans infected during this horrible pandemic, it has been a challenging 16 months for us in the healthcare field. But we also have to say we both feel a little unworthy of this award. It sounds cliche, but we were just doing our jobs. Same jobs hundreds of thousands of other healthcare providers are doing right now. And for me personally, it's not even a choice. I love the practice of emergency medicine and cannot think of anything else I would rather be doing even during a pandemic. But you see, Teresa and I know there are thousands of other Holy Cross grads out there, many of whom we know personally, who are equally, if not great, doing a greater job of making a difference during this crisis. We feel somewhat disappointed in ourselves for not having taken the time to nominate these fellow alumni for this award. <laughs> so we decided on behalf of all those not here tonight, those other Holy Cross physicians, many of whom we know, nurses, technicians, hospital administrators, school principals, teachers, community organizers, we would also like to accept this award on their behalf in acknowledgement of all the hard work and sacrifice they too have put forward this past year and a lasting effort to be men and women with others. Thank you again and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> 
Teresa Amalfitano yeah. Queen, class of 1997. It's your turn to join me on stage. <clears throat> Teresa Amalfitano Queen, you have given your life to the values you have embraced for a lifetime. Compassion, caring, healing, and service. Nurturing and comforting those less fortunate than yourself, you are an example to us all because in your giving, you have found and exude a profound depth of joy and meaning. For over a decade, you worked as sign language interpreter, having earned the credentials of the National Certificate of Interpretation and the National Certificate of Transliteration. Though your work was rewarding, you felt a strong calling to become a nurse. Your journey toward your nursing degree was not without challenges. You interrupted your studies more than once to care for your mother and your son when they were in their time of greatest need. But you persisted, listening always to your inner compass and supported always by your husband and fellow alumnus, Chris. In 2019, you graduated from County College of Morris as a registered nurse. You had not been working long in the critical care unit at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in Somerset, New Jersey when the COVID-19 pandemic began. Like your fellow frontline medical professionals, you demonstrated bravery, tenacity, and sympathy as you cared for those made ill by the virus. With your training in both sign language interpretation and nursing, you found yourself in a unique position to serve and comfort the sick and dying. Through grueling days and nights, you nursed the sickest people in the hospital, patients on ventilators who are gasping for air and unable to speak. You passed final messages to loved ones prohibited from visiting the hospital, and you translated crucial medical information via Zoom calls. With your special combination of skills, you eased the suffering of the afflicted day after day as the pandemic went on. In addition to your professional work, you and Chris also serve as executive board members of your district's special education parent advisory group. You have hosted Zoom parent support groups throughout the pandemic. You have organized panels of experts, administrators, case managers, and teachers to inform and support parents of special needs children through the diagnosis process and the creation of individualized education plans. With this work, you have eased the fear and erased the confusion of numerous parents trying to navigate a complex bureaucratic process. A hero of great humility, you insist on accepting this award in honor of healthcare workers everywhere. For your compassionate vision, your courageous heart, and your relentless dedication to those suffering and in need, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations, Teresa. Thank you. I'm a little misty. Um, Chris and I are extremely grateful for this incredible honor and recognition. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris and I have a little wooden sign that hangs in our home with a quote from scripture. It's from the book of Esther, and it says, perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. And we, brought, we even brought it down to show everybody. <laughs> it has always been a very special verse for us and became a mantra for us this past year. We've always felt it embodies the spirit of Holy Cross's guiding theme and purpose for us to become men and women for and with others. Each time Chris and I share with each other a difficult end of life conversation with a patient, an emotional discussion with a patient's family or a critical moment of care, we respond to each other with that verse. Perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. Last spring, especially, we would text it to each other in the middle of a grueling shift when Chris was down in the ER with COVID-19 patients lining the hallways and I was up in the ICU caring for multiple COVID ventilated patients on multiple machines and IV drips. And the code blue announcements sounded repeatedly overhead. My phone would buzz and my husband was texting me, perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. We would text it and remind each other to take a moment and know in our hearts 
that there was a reason each one of us was the person in that room with that patient at that exact time. My husband, Chris, was created to be an emergency physician in a global pandemic. I was created to be an ICU nurse in a global pandemic. We know this to be true. We have prayed on it, meditated on it, and repeated it to ourselves over and over in our heads while spending hours and hours caring for people on the precipice of death. Chris and I happen to have this very obvious and now very public way God revealed this to us. It is a blessing to have God reveal the plan for our purpose here on earth in such a blatantly obvious way. Chris and I have discussed many times that our marriage has always been bigger than just the two of us. Many colleagues and friends tell us how lucky we are that we have found our life's partner, our passions, and excuse me, our life's passions and have a partner who understands, supports, encourages, and literally works beside us every single step. They are right, we are very blessed. What we would like to share with you tonight is that the gift of knowing why we are created is not only present in the ER or the ICU or other big newsworthy events. Every single day has interactions and situations that present themselves for us to exist in the service of others. Those moments are the reason we were all created. This is the greatest lesson and gift Holy Cross gave to us, making life every single day bigger than just ourselves. We would like to say thank you first to our families, the Amalfitanos, the Sepulveruses, and the Creens. Thank you to our Holy Cross professors, our Holy Cross friends, professors who are now our friends, the Kimball dining staff, everyone who sent us fruit, jam, food, flowers, called, texted, and FaceTimed with us just to check in with words of encouragement. You were there for us and we will never forget it. We believe that one of the moments for which you were created was to be there to fill our tanks up with friendship and laughter so we could have the strength to go back into the war zone the next day. We especially want to thank our babysitter, Anne Cantorero, a college student from College of St. Elizabeth who bravely believed us that everyone wearing masks in our home at all times would keep everyone safe. While Chris and I worked very long shifts, our children were loved, supported, and encouraged through their remote school days by a really smart and awesome big sister. We want to thank the teachers, principals, administrators, and board of education who rose to the occasion to keep our children learning while the world swirled in chaos around them. Most of all, we want to thank our children, Lillian and Joshua, who are here, <laughs> for the Holy Cross Admissions Committee members watching, that's C-R-E-A-N, and their application years will be 2024 and 2026. Thank you. <laughs> Lillian and Joshua, you endured quarantine, schooling from home, and bravely watched both of your parents leave to fight a deadly virus every single day of last spring, summer, fall, winter, and now. We are very close to the day you will be vaccinated and you won't have to ask us, are you covid -y? <laughs> You are phenomenal. We are so very proud of you both and the incredible people you are becoming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christine Carol Krish, class of 2006, will you please turn on your camera and join me on stage? Christine Carol Krish, you are a woman of passion, caring, and dedication to your calling. You are a healer, an innovator, a problem solver. You are a fine example of one who becomes the change she wishes to see in the world. Upon graduating from Holy Cross, you pursued a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing from Stony Brook University School of Nursing. More than a career, nursing became your vocation. Called to this rigorous and noble work, you pursued excellence from the start. 
Selected for a graduate critical care nursing fellowship, you are quickly promoted to charge level nurse, guiding fellow nurses and patient care assistants. You worked at such top level medical establishments as Stanford University Medical Center and Massachusetts General Hospital. A Renaissance woman, you were voracious for knowledge and practice that would help you provide care in many settings. You trained in cardiothoracic ICU nursing and gained a skill set that allowed you to float to surgical and medical ICU care. As senior staff nurse in the cardiothoracic intensive care unit of New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center, you do it all. Manage post cardiac and thoracic surgical patients in a critical care setting, titrating cardiac drips, providing pain control, monitoring EKG in labs, and weaning patients from ventilator support. To put it simply, you are a nurse's nurse, a healer, a comforter, a frontline hero. And last year, when the pandemic swept the world, you became a co-founder of Daybreak Health in New York City, a digital health startup focused on providing efficient, reliable, and accessible COVID-19 testing and vaccination and other healthcare services. Over the last 12 months, you have built a team of over 100 nurses and operators to provide fast, reliable testing and vaccination and medical assistance to schools, hotels, municipalities, and television networks. You helped open two vaccination clinics to meet the needs of underserved areas of the city. Your vision and your hard work have combined to help heal a world wracked by disease, confusion, and anxiety. For your commitment to innovation and problem solving for the betterment of others, for your resilience, resolve, and call to action in the face of a catastrophic health crisis, for your dedication to alleviating the pain and suffering of all around you in every capacity you can imagine, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations, Christine. Thank you so much. Um, it's really an incredible honor to be chosen for this award when I know that so many graduates from Holy Cross have worked tirelessly this year in many different ways to serve their communities. And uh, similar to uh, what others have said, I, I feel that I can only accept this award in honor of all the other graduates who have pursued a career in nursing. I'm very grateful for my time at Holy Cross being so formative in my understanding of social justice and also a, about the uh, term vocation. I spent many hours, especially as a senior in the chaplain's office with Mary Beth Kearns Barrett and Megan Fox Kelly, um, trying to answer the question, now what? I was an English major with pre-med and I had really no idea how to navigate um, the years ahead. So I definitely hearken back on the tools that I formed with uh, working with them and it led me to a career in nursing that could not be more rewarding. Um, this past year has been the ultimate call to service and I really felt so fortunate that I was allowed to leave my home and go and do something for people and I could only have done that with uh, the support of my family, in particular, my husband, Luke, who kept his own business closed for several months to care for our then eight-month-old son, Peter. And then subsequently, um, my own family, my siblings, and my mother and father-in-law played such an important role in taking care of Peter um, so I could continue in my work. Um, being in the ICU, I was also very fortunate to be at a leading hospital in the country. Um, and it was exciting to be part of navigating the unknown and, and learning from so many people. Um, and I felt, you know, I've always felt that as a nurse, I'm in such a unique position to be with people in their most vulnerable moments. And um, this past 16 months has been just such a hyper concentration of that for all of us healthcare workers, when people were in their most critically ill state with no ability to see their own families, we felt that we had to play two roles 
as both provider and friend and family. Um, in particular, there was such a challenging time period for my colleagues because our good friend and coworker's mother became our patient. And I felt that this was just such a harsh reminder that like each person in these beds is the loved one of somebody. And I know that, you know, we always treated all the patients with so much compassion, but just seeing this blatant example, it redoubled our efforts to give our best and try to be innovative and try to do all the small details that would make it a tolerable experience for the patient. Um, and unfortunately, this woman, she suffered some of the most feared complications, including a stroke that left her with a question to all of us whether she, or not she would ever wake up again, whether she would move any of her muscles. And it was just so devastating. Um, around the same time, one of my um, best friends from Holy Cross, um, he was also a graduate from uh, the class of 06, uh, Dr. Christopher Morris called me and said he had an idea that he wanted to start a company to help meet the gaps in healthcare that New York City was struggling with, um, especially with COVID testing. Um, so I, I admit it, it reluctantly said, okay, I felt already busy, but let me, I would love to help Chris with anything. So, um, he gave me the ability to hire a group of, um, committed and amazing nurses who were interested to do something positive and um, reopen some of the things that kept our life feeling normal. So through Daybreak Health, our company, we were able to reopen two schools, including St. Ignatius in the Bronx, also with some support of alumni. Um, and another school I think many are familiar with, Cornelia Connolly Center in the Lower East Side. Um, we also helped a TV series film through production, as you mentioned, and that was a very exciting, um, different way of working than the ICU. And our company gained recognition that the city called us to see, would we be willing to run two vaccination clinics? And um, that couldn't have been the more, more rewarding to come full circle. And for many of my colleagues who, who joined in their spare time to help give vaccines, it's just very therapeutic after seeing the horror that we saw in the ICU. Every vaccine feels like a step in the right direction. And um, I just wanna mention that that same woman that was so ill in our unit, my friend's mother, this specific friend has been helping at our Flatbush Brooklyn clinic. And just last week, his mother walked into our uh, clinic for her second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. She made a re uh, miraculous recovery through many weeks in the ICU, followed by months in rehabilitation. And um, just bearing witness to her journey, I feel was like a reminder of the entire process of the pandemic. And I feel very hopeful going forward. Um, and I am just grateful that I've been able to participate. So thank you so much for the honor. I think it's just a reminder to me that there's probably more ways that I can help. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for all you're doing. Ronald Lawson, class of 1975, please join me on stage. Ronald Lawson, you are a man filled with empathy and compassion. You are a voice for those who have been silenced by systemic poverty, apathy, and racism. You are a model of the change and redemption that can occur when one opens himself to God, the world, and others. It is as if you took the Jesuit credo of men and women for and with others and turned it into a personal ritual, a daily practice of faith and love. For more than two decades, you have labored in the nonprofit sector, serving in a variety of senior management positions. Your passion for justice and equality sustained, strengthened, and focused you. No matter what the job or how busy your life became, you remain forever the volunteer's volunteer, bringing your considerable skills, insight, and leadership to any and all who asked for help. Since 2016, you have served as the Chief Operating Officer of Care for the Homeless, an organization that fights homelessness by delivering high quality and client-centered healthcare 
human services, and shelter to homeless individuals and families. You have advocated tirelessly for policies to ameliorate, prevent, and ultimately end homelessness. Care for the Homeless operates 26 New York City healthcare centers and two shelters throughout Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, and Queens. When the pandemic struck, you created the COVID-19 Impact Fund to cover emergency costs of responding to the crisis and to distribute the vaccine to care for the homeless patients. Your passionate dedication and dynamic leadership of care for the homeless saves lives every day and brings dignity to those who have been ignored and mistreated for far too long. Your love for alma mater matches your love for social justice and equity. Serving on the board of the Holy Cross Alumni Association, your work is a litany of projects that have elevated the college, our students, and the alumni body as a whole. Whether launching the Alana Mentoring Program or serving as chair of the Bishop Healy Committee, your desire to fulfill the college's mission is abundant and the energy you bring to every task appears limitless. As a longtime close friend recently said of you, quote, Ron loves Holy Cross more than anyone I know. He embodies what it means to be a crusader for others. Ron lives out the Jesuit mission in everything that he does. For your commitment to live the gospel message every day of your life, for your efforts to build and strengthen caring communities, for your abiding love for and work on behalf of compassion, justice, equality, and service, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancti Crucis Award. Congratulations, Ron. Thank you, Father Burroughs. Thank you, Provost Friedi. I am truly honored and humbled to receive this award. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my wife, Nina Clara Lawson, who, although she went to Emerson and not Holy Cross, demonstrates daily what it means to be a person for and with others. I'd also like to thank George Nashak, President and CEO of Care for the Homeless, whose leadership, vision, and guidance have been instrumental in our collective fight to end homelessness. Finally, I'd like to thank my Care for the Homeless colleagues who are on the front lines daily serving those in need. Whether it's assisting our shelter residents in their move to hotels in order to minimize their potential exposure to COVID, or providing health care to the homeless population in Brownsville, Brooklyn, one of the most health service deprived communities in the country, or providing vaccinations and health services at the largest homeless shelter in New York. Day in and day out, care for the homeless employees put those who are in need ahead of themselves. I am privileged and honored to call them colleagues. To quote a civil rights leader from the 1960s, when I is replaced by we, even illness becomes wellness. These are words I try to live by. Thank you once again for this honor. Thank you, Ron. Erin McAleer, class of 2002, please turn on your camera and join me. Erin McAleer, you labor for the most vulnerable of your fellow human beings. A woman of conscience and compassion, you use your many skills to battle the horrors of hunger and food insecurity. You strive with optimism and positivity to help all of us and our government to do the right thing. Since 2017, you have served as president and CEO of Project Bread, the leading anti-hunger organization in Massachusetts. For over 50 years, Project Bread has worked tirelessly to ensure that people of all ages have reliable access to healthy food. 
working collaboratively across sectors to create innovative solutions to end hunger, you have developed new community-based strategies to effect real change. Through both gra grassroots engagement and widespread movement building, you bring together people and organizations to work collaboratively to feed those in need and change the lives of those suffering in poverty. Social justice and service are your passions. Prior to Project Bread, you worked as Director of Opportunity Boston for the appropriately named Be the Change Incorporated, an initiative focused on developing a comprehensive strategy to improve opportunities for children living in poverty in Boston. You have taught at the Simmons School of Social Work and at Boston University School of Social Work, training new generations of dedicated caseworkers and public servants. During the pandemic crisis, feeding the impoverished has been particularly demanding, with food insecurity skyrocketing overnight. Yet you have risen to that challenge, speaking to the media about how the crisis has been affecting those most in need. Your most recent Walk for Hunger program was necessarily a virtual event, but you raised more than $1.2 million, which was pivotal in enabling Project Bread's rapid response to the hunger crisis in the early days of the pandemic. Throughout this past year, you have advocated for the restoration of federal SNAP funds. And thanks to the efforts of you and your team, the USDA granted a waiver last June to allow children and teenagers to receive free meals at more than 1,000 sites throughout the Commonwealth. You have made the message of your important work clear. I believe, you have written, that hunger is solvable. <clears throat> We can ensure that everyone has reliable access to food, and we should. Acting on that staunch belief, you have organized, advocated, and educated, insisting at every turn that no individual should ever go hungry. Your work is a challenge to each of us to become part of the solution to ending hunger. As a Project Bread board member has said of you, quote, Aaron understands that hunger isn't a personal failing, it's a policy failure and a public health issue. You drop Erin in the midst of a crisis and she just thrives. For your vision of a hunger-free community, for your unflagging service on behalf of those who struggle in poverty and hunger, for your resolute certainty that you can and will inspire generosity and altruism in your fellow citizens, the College of the Holy Cross presents you with the Sancta Crucis Award. Congratulations, Erin. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you, Father Burroughs. Thank you to all the other recipients tonight. I am humbled to be amongst them and was truly inspired by the comments they shared. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful to my Holy Cross education. I, when I got to Holy Cross, I was just blown away by both the level of education and, and how so many of my assumptions were challenged. And I really was instilled in me a social justice education. And, and today, still think back to some of the courses I took where we had thorough discussions on the difference between charity and social justice. And, and that education has informed me every step of the way. But I'm also even more grateful for the Holy Cross community. Um, going to Holy Cross was the greatest opportunity for me. And I've been supported by this community throughout every step of the way from my earliest internships um, to in the past three years. And um, I couldn't name everyone because there's there's simply too many, um, but there's two people I could not not name. Um, and the first is, is Liz Sullivan Greenhall, who was a graduate of O2 with me as well and works beside me at Holy Cross, challenges me every day, supports me every day, and has been critical in responding to this crisis with me. And the second is sitting beside me and probably doesn't want to be on the camera, but Joe Di Giovanni from class of 73, who has been, besides my mother, the most impactful person in my entire life and who has instilled in me all the values that have led me to respond to this work and, and instilled in me the strongest of work ethics. 
So I'm just so grateful to him for his leadership and mentorship. Um, and finally, speaking of that work ethic, I've like the others tonight have been working around the clock to respond to this crisis. So I want to thank my husband who's been incredibly supportive and my two kids. So thank you so much for this honor. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the entire Holy Cross community for your, for your support. Thank you, Erin. And now I invite Father Burroughs to offer a few concluding remarks. Thank you, Margaret. I, I think I have to say in my almost 10 years as president of the College of the Holy Cross, I don't think there's been any evening or event that's made me quite as proud as tonight that you, the um, alums of this college and representing so many more have made such a dramatic impact on our world and lived so clearly and thoughtfully and generously our mission. All of you live by the highest intellectual and ethical standards and your lives are imbued with hard work and integrity. And these awards reinforce your commitment to demonstrating the full measure of our Holy Cross mission. You've all accepted the legacy of sacrifice, hope, love, joy, and humility we cherish as part of our Jesuit dedication to faith and the promotion of justice. And we are enormously proud of you and humbled by your service. And I would like to close this special ceremony with reflection, a prayer, and then we'll have the uh, hymn Alma Mater. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, through his suffering on the cross, Jesus redeemed us from darkness and sin. And through his self-gift on the cross, Jesus showed how much he loved us, willingly enduring humiliation, judgment, and rejection. And as he handed over his life on the cross, Jesus extended to us the promise of eternal life with you. Tonight, as we honor these women and men of our Holy Cross, who are giving of themselves so generously to care for your suffering people in this time of COVID. Help us to follow their example wherever we work and live. Help us to see in their loving and serving a sign of your embodied love touching the pain of our world. And in their commitment to comfort and cure, they model your healing touch, a touch so desperately needed in our suffering world. Tonight, loving God, as we give thanks for their discipleship and witness, please strengthen us to follow them with generosity and love in your work of healing and reconciling. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for being with us. One of the great joys of participating in an event by Zoom is the fact that so many more people than usually uh, can be at these events are here tonight celebrating with us all and being so moved and impressed by the generosity and the commitments of our fellow alums. So thank you all so much for being here and being an active member of the Holy Cross family, a family that I have come to know and love and cherish. Good night and please stay safe and healthy. God bless you all.